How you doing everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and I'm back with another review, another side-scrolling platformer, this time a Metroidvania called Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight. Let's get straight into this one then and find out if it's worth your hard-earned cash. I'll start with the story which is about a priestess from the village of Lun in a land full of corruption, cursed and in decline. Evil has spread and the dead rise. Each night is darker than the last and time is short then. It's up to you to find the queen as your only hope to save the land. Now gameplay here, any game that is a 2D platformer has Moonlight in the title and is also a Metroidvania with beautiful pixel art is always going to pique my interest. Ever since I was a boy playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night, I was fascinated by these types of games and when Momodora hit my inbox, it was not a game I was familiar with. How could I have missed the fact that there had been three previous games in this series? I want to get some of the negatives out the way first though. Although this is a Metroidvania of sorts, it's quite limited in that yes, you will be able to explore new areas and it will require some backtracking. But other than a few new skills to explore these newer areas, there's not that much more, which is a shame. The gameplay first of all though is great. Jumping, double jumping and dodging is accomplished with ease. We have tight controls and the character just feels right. Not too floaty but these moves are all available from the beginning. It would have been great had some of these been kept back and unlocked a little later into the game. Finding a bow for example would have been a brilliant surprise. Although later on it can be upgraded. I did love having a bow and arrow along with my leaf which acts as your melee weapon. Performing jumps, shooting arrows and combating the multitude of enemies and bosses you come across is just a lot of fun and combining these moves feels good. Enemies will vary from ones that poison you or curse you so you can't use your items along with wizards and witches casting spells that you'll have to avoid. There are jumps, dogs and all sorts of little nasties along with traps. Equipping passive items and active ones will help you on your fight and finding vendors along the way is always a nice little incentive, especially as most are hidden off the beaten track so it pays to explore. It's all quite basic here but it does add value to the game. Now I do love a good challenge and thankfully the game has difficulty modes to make the game last a little bit longer. As long as you hit the various bells acting as checkpoints, the game will duly save along with any coin you have picked up along the way by finding chests and slaying enemies. Felt like a little 2D Dark Souls in a way, do I risk going further and dying and losing all that coin that I collected or do I go back and whack the bell for a quick save? Kind of a risk versus reward scenario for sure. I did seem to find a trick though where if you're near a bell and go into the next screen where there is an enemy you could potentially kill that enemy over and over again by moving from screen to screen because they respawn. You can then save by the bell and it's an easy way to save money. Be aware though that enemies do respawn each time as I said so if you do want to go back to a bell you could potentially face death. I just spent 30 minutes beating one boss only to be hit by a floating skull on the way back. I wasn't saved by the bell in this instance folks. Now money can be used to buy certain items which will help give you extra attack power for example and it's useful against the more powerful enemies later on. It feels as though this game has been fine tuned over a few iterations it really does show. You can tell the developer has really poured a lot of love into this. It does feel familiar for sure and it treads old ground but it feels great to play and that's all that matters here. It's a shame that the combat does not evolve too much from the beginning and taking out enemies at distance with the bow and arrow was a little bit on the easy side. I'd just stay back if I'd lost health and spam arrows until I killed everything on screen. Bosses do feel fun to beat as it feels like you know, you've got to put the work in to beat them. There's no block move here so it's about learning the patterns and then using your range of skills although limited to the best of your ability to take them down. Dodging and moving at the right time to avoid those attack patterns. You will meet characters along the way and this will forward the story and these little conversations are just the right amount of bite sized chunks. 
However, the story overall was a little disappointing, unfortunately. Game did take me around four hours to complete. If you spend longer exploring and getting all the collectibles, then you're looking at probably around five and a half to six hours. So that was a bit of a disappointment to me. I guess I'm used to Metroidvania games lasting a lot longer and for there to be a lot more to uncover, but sadly, this was a game that was rather short by comparison to some of the other games that are already out on the Switch, you know, in the same genre and at the same price. In terms of audio, the game is very accomplished indeed. I felt the atmosphere and each piece of music chosen felt like it was just right for the area. I felt like it was one mysterious, perilous journey and the music encompassed that feeling all the way through. It felt eerie and atmospheric and I really did enjoy it. In terms of visuals, I mean, you're probably tired of hearing the words pixel art and retro in the same sentence, but we have it here in this game again. And, you know, I can say it was lovingly crafted of that, there is no doubt. It looks rather beautiful and I enjoyed the visual aspects of this game a lot. The biggest issue for me though was the aspect ratio chosen. I've not seen a platformer on the Switch, I don't think, with a 4x3 aspect ratio and playing this game with massive black borders on either side of the TV did bother me somewhat, especially when you've had the pleasures of playing such wonderful titles like Celeste, Hollow Knight or Yoko's Island. This was a letdown, especially as there's no options to even mask those borders. In terms of value, the game is £12.59 at the moment, $14.99 in the USA. It really depends on how much you like these type of games. There is replay value in that you can play in harder difficulties. There are things to go back and explore and secrets to find. Before getting on to my verdict, if you're a new watcher here, then why not consider subscribing to our channel for future reviews like this one. So what did I think of Momodora? Well, it's one of those games that if you like Metroidvanias, you're going to enjoy this one. I've got no doubt about that. It's got time controls combat feels good and the art style is beautiful and so is the music the only thing I didn't really like here was the use of the aspect ratio choosing a 4x3 on the switch is a little bit of a shame and it was just a little bit too short other than that it's a game that I do recommend a 7.5 out of 10 then now if you enjoyed this review guys please hit that like button would really appreciate that and leave us a comment let us know what you think of this game have you purchased it already what are your thoughts you might have played it on another platform already i've got a video coming up it's of mario we've got loads of platformers that we've reviewed this week so check that one out that was reviewed by jordan and my name is juan romero from switchwatch and i'll hopefully see you again on the next one see you soon